Hi, this is Rose, and today we're going to make an easy DIY wood jewelry organizer. Come on, let's get started. Okay, to make a jewelry organizer out of a stained frame that doesn't need painted. So what you're looking for when you wanna install hooks, as well as wire in a frame, you want to look at the edge here. And this has a flat spot, and I don't know if you can tell, but it bevels in just slightly. And so we're looking for this flat spot to be at least a half inch. And this one has plenty of room. We're also looking for a frame that has plenty of depth. Um, you can get ones with quarter of an inch to half an inch. Half an inch is my preference, and this one has well over that. It's more close to three quarter of an inch. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is to mark and measure for these sawtooth fingers. I use these particular ones that I buy off of Amazon and they come with screws and they're just my personal preference. Okay, so I have my line that's like a big L and then I take my sawtooth finger and I place it on the line as best as I can. And, uh, oops. <laughs> Trying to hold it down and I made my hand shake because I don't want this to slip. And so next thing we need is a pliers and this is a needle nose plier with a nail at the end that I've added. And we're going to take that plus a hammer. And we are going to tap so that we will have a place for our drill bit to set. I'm going to line up my Colting ruler. You can use any ruler that you like. I just happen to like this because it's clear. And I have plenty of room here. So I'm going to, I'll just indent it. At least a quarter of an inch is what you want to indent. You want to find the middle. So this goes, um, the length of this frame is 11 and a quarter inches. If we come over, so that there's an eighth inch gap on this side, there will also be an eighth inch gap on this side. And so, then they'll each side will indent one and eighth inch inches and it will be just fine. So I'm making little T's because where the two lines intersect is where we will, where we will tap with our pliers and hammer. Okay, so we got our T's. Well, if you can see that in the camera, perhaps it's a little light because it's pencil. But trust me, they're there. So we have a needle nose pliers again. We have our hammer. And we're going to tap away. So lining that nail up, and here we go. When you're working, you want to make sure you have good lighting shadows. I think one of my lights must be out because I have some shadows today. Okay, so I have holes. You can see that in the camera. But I do have holes each where I tapped. And that, again, is so my drill bit won't slip. This is my drill. And right now it has the wrong bit, so we'll switch that out. We'll use that in a bit when I screw in the fingers. This is my bit that I'm going to use, and I know it's a good size for both the hangers because it's similar in size. It's slightly smaller, it looks like, than that hook, as well as these hooks here. This customer 
has requested gold hooks. And you'll see it's about the same size. The divots, um, I don't know what you want to call them, the parts that pokey parts that stick out on the screw. So it's, it's about the same size, so it works well. So I want to screw that in. Make sure it's nice and tight and we get to drill. the wood shavings off and now we're going to do where the hangers are at. Okay, so I've got that done. I'm going to Swipe off those shavings. And now I can switch bits and we can screw in the hangers. Okay, so I'm just going to line that up over the holes. Drop screw. And away we go. Okay, I'm back. Now I have the hangers installed to hold it on the wall. Now we are going to screw in hooks. I already have these drilled from earlier. These are my hooks. This customer requested gold hooks. So these particular are 7 8 inch. That's generally what I use. Um, for whatever reason, the, the silver ones, they're 1 inch. So, but it's only an 8 inch more. So. They look almost the same as the white and the gold. Okay, so we're just going to hold it. You kind of stab the hole where it is, get it stuck in there, push and turn. And once you get it around a time or two, it stays in there. And so I will continue with that. and screw in the rest of the remaining holes. So I push and turn and then it's stuck in there. It's not gonna fall out. And I just gotta get in the rest of the way. Okay, I have all of the hooks installed. And what the best angle is to show you. They are all installed. This is what the bottom looks like. Looks pretty good. A few of them need to be straightened all the way, but pretty good. Okay, so next step, we need to put the wire in. And so I have a piece of quarter inch hardware cloth that has already been cut outside. When I cut it, I usually cut a square or two extra on the rows just to make sure I have enough. So, we need wire snips. And we need to make sure we have a row of overlap like I have right here on each side. And you can have slightly under if need be. So, looks like I just need to trim off one row right here. And so I'll go ahead and do that. Ok, 
Okay. So that's good. I always double check it every time. Just in case somehow I make a mistake and I don't go to the end and realize, oops, and then have to start over. Because <laughs> nobody's done that, right? <laughs> okay, so I have to trim off this row right here. This particular piece of wire is slightly crooked and that happens. It's not my fault, it is the people who made it. Um, it's supposed to be for <laughs> like a chicken house or, or a fence or something of the sort on a farm and that's not what I'm using it for. Um, we tried to get the really big package of wire and it seems to be way more crooked than the smaller packages. So I don't think I'm gonna buy the big package again and I'll just get the smaller ones, but I'm gonna deal with it. We can fix the slight crookedness of the wire. Okay, we just have to have a little more detail when we are installing it. Okay, so I have the wire here and I have my angle iron. You can use a ruler or whatever works best. And I need to fold over about one row. Okay, I have both sides folded on the short side. I do the short side first because then if I have a really big frame, it's just easier. It wouldn't matter in regards to the length of my angle iron. It doesn't really matter on the 8x10 because both sides are shorter than my angle iron. <laughs> so I am going to cut 2x2 two two squares of wire off of here so that it's easier to fold. And that won't show, you won't see it when you or have it on the wall. You won't even know that I cut this. Ouch. Okay, so it looks like that. Two by two, two by two, two by two, and two by two. Okay. You would think we're going into Noah's Ark. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see, measure here. And as I said, this one's a little bit crooked, so I have to do some adjustments. And fold it on there. Okay, so this side looks like it's the straightest, so I'm going to fold it first and then I will have to probably do the other one by hand putting it on the frame which isn't my favorite thing which is why I like the smaller rolls of wire they don't seem to be as crooked as the big rolls so okay so it looks like this side has less than a square and this side has over a square. It's just not my favorite thing when they make it so crooked. Sometimes it's just off by a little bit and you're fine, but this is off by a lot. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Okay, if I press, I can fold it custom right into this frame. Okay, it's in there pretty good. There's a few spots like on this end is a little shorter. This one I folded over a little bit extra. So that's where the discrepancy is. So I will make sure and staple that end first before I do that end or it will not work. Okay, so here is my staple gun.
And I use quarter inch staples. Here's a row of them. And I'll have that there in case I need it. We'll start with this then. I feel the sample gun is a little loud, so I'm gonna pause the video and I'm also gonna put in my earplugs and some headphones over it because I wanna protect my ears. So I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and I have finished stapling. And this is what it looks like. And so, um, I'm not going to go, not going to staple right now, but in case you were wondering, you set the staple gun like this, and that's right on the rabbit. The rabbit is a part, a little ledge that they cut, and you set that in there, and then you push, and you let the staple go. Okay, so this is the finished product. We are done, except for one more step. We have these felt pads. Felt pads are used for moving furniture or under a lamp, so it doesn't scratch your furniture. And so they have a little sticky, you remove that, and I put it in the corner. And this is so that the frame doesn't scratch the paint off your wall, and it moves there nicely. Some frames need a little bit more room. This particular frame has plenty of depth inside here, and so it won't have a problem with the earring scratching the wall through the frame. And so we are done. And so it looks like this from the front. In a few moments, I'll style it up. Um, if you like this video, I'd love it if you would uh, give it a thumbs up, thumbs up or <laughs> subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching Bros K DIY and Design. Have a great day.